Welcome everyone, like all of you, to come and um, spend the time with us to know more about the arts of Movana. And of course, um, we have to thank you, Movana, our multidisciplinary artist who fly over from Portuguese to share her work. And so, um, Movana graduated from RMIT and Hong Kong Art School program in 2005, isn't it right? And, um, before studying art, I know you have a fashion background as well, is it? Yeah. So it's at uh, London that you have your um, first degree in fashion? Yeah, I studied in London in, yeah, in 1997 something. I graduated there with fashion design and then I returned to Hong Kong um, after a few years and one day just walked past art center. Mm. Someone gave me a leaflet about study fine art and then I had no idea. Can I? Still okay to go to school? Like after many years and then I just take the leaflet, went to interview and that's how I started my, as now as an artist. So I went to study part-time and get to know about painting first, my major. So in 2003, that's how I started study as a student in fine art in Hong Kong art school. Yeah. So it's been 20 years now. I don't know how many years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe we can talk more about the work you present here because I know this work um, has been exhibited in um, very like different countries. Like um, it's also work collaborate with the Louis Vuitton in Hong Kong and Singapore and also has exhibited in London and Korea, and then also Sydney Contemporary uh, before. So um, you mentioned that this work is actually a combination of 24 pieces of work. Can you elaborate a little bit more about this? Yeah. You see this uh, installation called The Reconstructing, and it's uh, in 2004 when I still, as a student in the school, my teacher asked me, gave us a, a project, a question, analyze yourself. And the first question to analyze yourself, who you are. And for me, I, as I, my background, I studied fashion design. So that time I bring most of my magazine to Hong Kong. And in my bookshelf, I use about 139 magazine, the book in my bookshelf, equal to me as Movana, 150 centimeter high. And what's the relationship between each of me? And then that time I working actually full time as an accountant in my, in my father's company. And the, the business in 2003, not so good. So they need to move to China. So I'm the one can sharing some kind of confidential document. So when I sharing, I come out the idea with the paper, how to transform to to a wearable piece for my first project. So that's how I'm knitting. So I use the paper, one of the magazine to shedding. I, you can see these pieces is by 24 wearable piece. So it's wear by different people in Korea, in, in London, in different place. So different people interact with the pieces. So this when I was a student. Long time ago, 2004. So that's the first magazine, ID magazine. So that magazine is 60 page. So 60 page equal to Movana, that is me. So I transform into one wearable piece. And here's all my bookshelf in my studio in Hong Kong, like 139, but I'm not using that. Usually I use like the, the materials related to me or someone gave me. So I use one is the core ID magazine. And after like 2008 transformed these pieces, the reconstructing, like in why I got the idea to transform from 24 pieces into one. In 2008, Hong Kong, the first art fair, international art fair in Hong Kong. So I do a performance in the art fair and one of the gallery invited me to China, Beijing for a solo exhibition. Like as an artist, like a student, just graduate not so long. And then this is really good chance to go to step out of Hong Kong. 
and then I don't know how can I fit that space as a solo by 10 by 8 meter big space and got the inspiration for me to transform all my artwork, the 24 pieces into this big sculpture. So since 2008, it's traveling to all different country, like to Korea, to to Seoul, to Venice, to Singapore, and then where by different people and different way of install. And this time in Melbourne, very different. I when I see the four pen, I have no idea how to adjust the size. Also, uh oh, and then come right here. It's so perfect lighting. We change from six meter to. 4.5 meters something, just fold the pieces, some part, and then the piece more dialogue with the space here. Mm. This work is very flexible in size. Right? Yeah, and then with the shadow also. Yeah, and then I also saw one of your interview that you're saying the knitting works are actually weaving people's stories. So um, it's it all related to the contents of the magazine that you mentioned about? Yeah, like the, this piece is, is by magazine, like it, with different language of um, magazine from Japan, from Korea, from all around the world my friend gave me. But in my recent work and one of my ongoing projects called Traveling Into Your Bookshelf, and then this one is more like it's me, it's my lifetime project. So it's ongoing since 2009 and I collect books from people's bookshop. Like the first stop is in London in 2009 when people invite me for exhibition or like Melbourne or somewhere, anywhere around the world when people invite, I bring these pieces and then to stay in the person's home and invite them to give me one book from their bookshop which inspired them, what's meaning to them and I'll read the book to learn from the person and travel with the person together. Like not really plan what to do, just the person, what's their daily life. I just follow them to meet their family or their neighborhood. So first here is see London, how I bring my paper shredder and just knit with the person. So the person who invite me, she will knit also with the neighborhood. So that's in London and then in Milan and some people in the street, how they uh, to interact with the pieces together. So you, it's like you're teaching the people to do the knitting as well? Yeah, so it's um, not say like teaching, it's invite them to ex experience, experience the journey, like they, how you meet a friend. Because in 2009, I think that time, not yet have in Instagram or Facebook, I don't know. I started using in 2000. 2015 something and that that's how you meet a friend because the real friend how you get to know each other is through the hand you touch you talk so knitting is kind of like you gathering people we sit together and then we chatting we really know each other through in person not in a digital world so that's how through the knitting to meet that is Paul and in London and some some people and how do you um, find those um, people that are interested in your project? Are they strangers or um, is it friends of you? Uh, most time it's a stranger and some is friend. Yeah. Uh, my first time in Melbourne is 2015. Yeah, that's my first time you use social media also. <laughs> it's so different. Like people how to get to know each other that time quite confusing and but when I really come here I don't know the people who come like Tani like who invite me for a project we collaborate in Frankston about voting identity like who we are and and because that time people starting using digital communication starting have Instagram Facebook more people online to meeting friend or how you acting a friend and for for me I I don't know him, but when he invite me for a project, I just say, yeah, I come. And he come to pick me up, and then we go to different place to learn about what is about Melbourne for me. For me, that time is kind of summer, it's summer, yeah? 
And then we most time just in the beach, meeting, talking, meeting people, play with kids. So the whole exhibition, voting identity, people come to into the space, all full of the paper, the shared like ocean is our home. We go into the space. Yeah, so it's playing. We enjoy the moment together, but just like knitting with Tani knitting, he's not, in, he's not like know how to knit. No one really need to know. And then, but when he learn, how you get to know, and then one person teach another person. So everyone to interact together. So this is Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So um, I know this project is continue doing until you don't know when will it uh, stop. This traveling into your bookshelf is every time we're getting longer. Now it's, now it's 20 meter long. So I think it's until my life ending, the work will still not yet ending because maybe my niece or someone can continue my work. So it's, it's just like... It could on, be a yeah. legend. Yeah, oh. it's a lifetime yes. story. So I just select some place I really, because every place, everyone, the story or from the book is so, so different. This in Cappadocia, I, I went to Istanbul, Africa for an exhibition. And then after the exhibition, I am just say, oh, where shall we go? And I meet a friend there, we just get on the bus. And where the bus going, we don't know. The last stop, they stop in Cappadocia. This is the last stop. You have to get off. Okay, we just get off. And then just searching, wow, it's all the cave. Like this, people live in the cave. And we just knock the door. Can we stay here? And one lady, a couple, and they stay there. They let us stay. So she gave me a book and about her story. She adventured to to Cappadocia when she was 18 or 20. And then she fall in love with someone in there, her husband, so changed her life. So she lived there. So how she know about my project and she gave me this book also. So that's how we knit together in Cappadocia. And no people, the whole mountain, the landscape, you can't find people. You just since morning, what till sunset? Is different kind of landscape. So, oh, yeah, some field play. This in China, because the portraits keep moving to different play. And China in Lijiang, I learn about Dongba, the language. You can see the symbol, how people communicate. I don't know like other language, like just English now I know. But some people like we, you went to Russia, went to Siberia, different place, or and, um, you don't need to know the language. You just to draw the symbol to communicate with the people. Like this in Russia, in, in Moscow in 2016. So that's why I don't know Russian, like I can't communicate. And it's in Chen Siberia. And we just draw symbol to communicate. And that's 60 hours in the chain. And when people invite me also to Kanasnoya in Siberia, in the middle of Siberia, and every artist take the flight, like few hours to landing to there. And I'm the only artist, I don't want to take, so easy to take the flight. I just take the chain Siberia. I'm very exciting in, win in November, but it's minus 25. But I love the cold, I love snow. Then that's me, and then I went now, okay, the train stop, and then I jump off to see snow. It's frozen, but it's so beautiful. And this is my roommate. I'd be scared in the beginning. Oh my God, how can but someone... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> they are Russian soldiers. That, that time is in my friend, a whole cold group of people, maybe around 20, 30 people, all Russian soldiers. In the midnight, heavy rain, heavy snow, they come in the train and then come to my platform, knock the door. I locked the door actually, that time scare. And then someone open the door. Oh my God. And then just, I don't, can't, can't really know them. And when I bring my art piece out, I'm knitting and they ask me, what you are doing something? And they also join my project. 
and that 60 hour, 68 hours, how we become, we don't know anyone, I don't know that, but we become friends and we quiet to say goodbye, like how the, that's their friendship and they gave me noodle because I bring instant noodle from Hong Kong <laughs> and how we sharing food. So one short video about the chain Siberia. That's how the pieces. In my room, <laughs> I sleep with my heart world. <laughs> and everyone just joined. This is the first lady sitting opposite. No conversation. I'm just doing my thing. And then some people in the next room, they come by. So this is the most memory, a uh, memorable um, journey that yeah. you have in this project. Because we were not very scared to take the train, but at the end, that's the most meaningful time, right? In the train with the people, everyone become friends. We just enjoy together, like theater. And they open the curtain, hi, friend, traveling, dancing, running, drinking, <laughs> and then just like this in, in the train, right? It's not long, you think, so short time. But it's a very good example on how arts link everyone connecting strangers together and then everyone can enjoy the, um, the joyful of yeah. arts in heat. Yeah. And I know this, I have been to this exhibition too, it's uh, like, a very important solo exhibition in Hong Kong. Um, I also remember this tunnel is beautiful, like with all the books on the ceilings. Um, you want to talk more about this solo exhibition? Yeah, and um, this is called Knitted Chair. One of my bigger solo exhibition since now is when I, I went to visit this exhibition space like one of the Hong Kong, like 20,000 square feet. I really like the space. It's like a meter ceiling high. But for me, I just think, how possible? Can I have an exhibition here? I have no idea. And then one day I, I met someone who working there. She's also in my knitting project. And we're just talking. Yes, if you, you, can, you can handle, of course you can. And then I just started two years in 2011, working so hard. And then for that two year time, 2013, I started the project. And this is the entrance. You can see 400 books hanging on the ceiling. It's empty, it's the book cover. All the page is inside the exhibition space, how you can see. And these 400 books is from friends all around the world who they gave me. And I read the book and then share it and transform into this art project called literature. And literature is like how we do the knitting, it's not about the techniques, but we learn about how the people, we, our friendship, our history, culture, language and our relationship between everyone, we are just connecting together. So when they walk into the space, you can see an insulation piece, this is called knitting, uh, knitting conversation, and it's about 20 meter. And the piece is knit by all my friends around the world since not so long time, actually, 2011 to 2013, I invite 150 friends around the world to, to be part in the project. So everyone knitting their own book. They send the book to me, I read, I share them, and then send to them. It's a long process, actually very, very hard. You need to communicate with people. And because in 2011, people, everyone in different way of connection. Some people I need to send them by Instagram message, and some people Facebook message, message some people WhatsApp, some people by, by mail, email, and by post. Everyone different. You need to talk to them with your interest, be part in the project, and then send to them, collecting. But at the end, it's really happened here. So that's how the paper, and in the opening, how the insulation. So the pieces, yeah, 150, and then in the opening, we invite 50 friends to come to the opening. So they're knitting together under their artwork. 
So that's the word we collaborate together. So everyone, uh, no matter their student, how old they are, from the younger is four years old, the oldest that time is 85 something. It's my grandmom. That time she's still around. So she's also joined my project. So everyone just knit together and all the, from different culture. They, some, they can't speak Cantonese, they're from Paris, someone from Malaysia, so some from Hong Kong, so everyone just come and they meet together. Mm. So this is the piece just collected by Empress Museum in Hong Kong, is it? Yeah, this so is... this around end of this year, they will, they, or next year, they will, will exhibit in the museum. So people can go to see also. Yeah, so the, the process, how my Korean friend, Yuan, and he gave me this book, it's by Jen Mori. Jen Mori is a travel writer. So when I read the book, I don't know Korean. I try to take the cross, actually. I try to, like, I'm mm -hmm. like, I went to learn different languages, but they were so difficult. But I, I can't. But I read the English. It's about, um, travel story around the world also. So he gave me a book. So that's the piece that he need. It's about one meter something. So in the beginning, I sent him just like this and post to Korea. And then two years after, he sent me back. And in Hong Kong also, my friend, we, every week I meet different people. We just meet in different location, in some cafe, some park. We just meet up and then we need and chatting, la 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 la, different thing, talking. So it's how we, in a busy city like in Hong Kong, we are so close, but everyone's so long distance, so busy. How you can meet? Like, you need to arrange, but like we, we try to catch up. But then people join me, I just tell them, oh, today I will hear. Then some people just come by. And then to the next day, I will in somewhere or in, in, in Korea or in London. So someone just come to meet me in, in there. So every time we need a pieces and then come by together. And that's the, how the pieces join together in this 20 meter piece. This is the same piece, but in California. Oh. And also with different Kid, everyone come. It's more crazy there. It's different than Hong Kong. Hong Kong people are so shy. They not really join in. But in California, wow! They just I'm, jump into oh, they have to wait in a line to wait. It's over. I met over three hundred people because everyone join the porch. I write down their email, their name, and then it's yeah. Over three hundred people need together. Hmm. Yeah, and then it's funny, I don't know anyone there. It's at Simon Bird's 14 Factory project. And I stay, actually that time I stay in Airbnb. And after people come, I met so many people. And then every night, I stay in different people's home. <laughs> every night, okay, in, in, some, in, in Venice Beach, in Beverly Hill, in Highland Park, somewhere. So all different. Just follow the people, like, okay, today I go to this state. It's fun, right? So this is another way to install like in the in 14 foot fracture. And this is the body container what you just yes. mentioned about. And also since 2005, mm -hmm. when I was a student, that time I, my graduation show, I created the first pieces. Oh. It's the, on the right end, that is the body container. The so first that one. is the first one. Yeah, the on first the one. Right. And then after I create more than 10 pieces. Mm. And now it's, they are in different countries, some museum or some private collector, they collect. So it's all around different place. I don't know where I can visit them already. Some I don't know who collect it. Mm. <laughs> some I know. I, when I travel, I will go to visit them also. So it's very interesting on how you start this um, art uh, method very early at your, since you're studying and then after you graduate, you already develop different series with this method. 
Yeah, yeah. but until now, I still doing same way but different material mm. and yeah, different concepts. Yeah, because you hear you every piece is different material. Like the one connecting is about like in two thousand nine when people in Korea they invite me to do a project about war and peace, celebrate the sixty anniversary of the North and South Korea, like the peace. And but for me as a Hong Kong artist, I don't know about Korean history. And for me, South and North is a family. And then I I just create the word is connecting. How human connecting? North and South, we are family. And then I perform there. I collect the materials, Korean history war, the material how I need, and the contemporary art in in Seoul. And that's how we in the city, like how the people think about the peace. The young generation is all think about the peace. We are same, and that's how I perform in the city in Seoul in Korea, but not in the north. And <laughs> it's quite dangerous that I don't know. Yeah, so so still in the south, but to feel to to talk to the people. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I know this is your latest um, work developed from of the body containers that you did a very beautiful performance yeah. in this space. And in like two years ago, I moved from Hong Kong, like in 2020, moved from Hong Kong to Portugal. And after I stayed in Portugal, in Lisbon, like outside Lisbon, I loved the nature so much. And the sky, the color of the sky, every day like infinity blue. And I just, my studio is not inside anymore. I just knitting the beach, knitting the mountain. And that's how it inspired me, the project, not just about this. And then I had starting to doing a new project about human and nature. And in March, I, I invite a dancer, collaborator, he's, he's Portuguese, he's in Portugal. I met him and then we tried to learn about, I learned from him. I went to his workshop, how's the movement of body, how we use the body to talk, not in language, and then move. And then I started to, to learn about this kind of content improvisation movement. And then I also invite a, a Tyler is from California, a filmmaker who, when I was in XP in California, who I met, and then we three of us, we renting a camper van, and we, in one month, we stay in the camper van, travel around Europe, mm -hmm. start the engine from Portugal, and just to exploring about nature. And every time we see the landscape, where we want to stop, we just stop, and that's how we, the sculpture, we perform is like you. We focus in the time and listen to the nature and just the lighting, mm -hmm. it moves. Mm -hmm. And this is in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. But actually, it can be here. Because the whole world, we are just the same. And in the video or in the performance, we want to express how questioning the lie in between human and nature or between all culture or human, we are just the same. We sharing our earth, our land together. And in different landscape, we just create different composition, <coughs> but in the stillness, how we, we get to back to in our time, how before like the modern city take over the nature. So this is so still searching how the landscape, so the lighting, like it's just like a painting. We go into a painting and to listen to them. And here we have one video to share. So it's three minutes. You can take a look.
So this uh, video, like the sculpture, the body container is neat with map. Is I collect during COVID time in 2011, 12, uh, 2021, and then collect from all my friends around the world all the map. Like everyone, we lock down, we can't travel. The whole world like frozen. And then I, that time in Hong Kong, I just knitting hour, and I went to Portugal and continue knitting. So this body sculpture is, is all knit by map. And then wear on the body is like our second skin. And then travel, traveling to this Euro to perform how we can, every one of us or our, our human world, how can we just rest, stop, and then to feel our world, our, how alive. Is the nature is still everywhere alive, and then between friendship, people, and we just sometimes we need to stop to listen to each other. Mm. It, because it's so hard, like our lives, everyone's so busy, we don't have time to listen. So in the video, our body, the human, just in frozen, in the stillness, just let the nature to move. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>